I'm presenting my paper on behalf of all of my collaborators. I know I'm being observed using video interventions to educate users about targeted advertising on Facebook. This is a joint project with my collaborators at UC Santa Cruz, Clemson University, and the Indian Institute of Technology at Kharagpur. Sometimes, when we use social media, we like to think that we are the customers. In reality, we, the users, are actually the product. While providing you with access to your digital social network online, sites like Facebook use your interactions online, both on and off their platform, to try and understand the things that you are interested in. Facebook then uses these assumptions to give you a tailored ad experience. They do this by providing advertisers access to a vast network of interest categories and other demographic information, which advertisers can use to target specific ads to, to, spe to specific demographics. For example, Apple may want to start an ad campaign to get existing iPhone users to upgrade to the newest iPhone. They can use Facebook to send targeted advertisements specifically to existing iPhone users, saving them advertising costs by not showing the ads to a potentially irrelevant audience. It's important to understand that, the, that these systems not only allow advertisers to show ads to an audience that share a specific interest, it also allows advertisers to explicitly exclude groups of people from being shown specific ads. While this can be beneficial both to advertisers and consumers, there is a dark side to targeted advertisement. For example, a few years ago, Facebook's platform got into trouble for allowing, allowing advertisers to discriminate against women for certain job advertisements. Advertisers were found to be explicitly excluding women from seeing ads related to certain job advertisements. Advertisers also used this system to discriminate against older workers in employment advertisements, again by explicitly excluding Facebook users above a certain age from seeing certain job ads. And advertisers also used the system to discriminate against African Americans and Latinos by preventing them from seeing ads related to housing in specific neighborhoods, an example of modern day redlining. Facebook is obviously aware of these problems and has provided advertising controls to help users avoid discriminatory, harmful, or irrelevant ads. These controls include preventing certain topics Facebook has assumed you are interested in from being used to target you, removing the ability for advertisers to target you based on certain demographic information, such as education, employer, or relationship status, and to opt out of seeing any advertisements of a certain, of a potentially sensitive nature, such as alcohol, parenting, gambling, or dieting. Prior work has shown that users either don't know these controls exist, or they don't know how to find them, as they appear to be buried in several levels of privacy settings. So, how can we educate and motivate users to actually care about targeted advertising? While originating in the public health space, protection motivation theory helps to explain how, in the face of a given threat, individuals perform two appraisals which determine their ultimate behavior. First, individuals perform a threat appraisal to evaluate the potential danger from a threat, both the severity of that threat and their own susceptibility. Secondly, individuals perform a coping appraisal in which they determine how they are able to mitigate or avoid this threat. This is done through evaluating how effective a given response would be at mitigating the threat and their own self-efficacy, whether or not they think they have the ability to execute that response. These two appra appraisals together predict how users intend to act, which then in turn affects their actual behavior. Using this theory, we developed persuasive videos that influence the way users perform these threat appraisals. Specifically, in an attempt to increase individuals' perceived vulnerability and severity of harms from targeted advertising, we designed a realistic hypothetical scenario regarding perceived discrimination in employment advertisements towards students at our institution. We additionally created digital literacy content that informs users about the advertising controls Facebook offers, instructions on how to find and use them, and an explanation of how these controls can help prevent them from being discriminated against. This was intended to increase users' perceived self-efficacy and the perceived efficacy of the controls themselves. 
We additionally created reflective learning content, which took information directly from the viewer's own Facebook profile, including some of their advertising interests that we programmatically labeled as religious or political, and injected it into the video itself, providing users with concrete evidence showing their own susceptibility to potential harm. I'll talk a little bit more about how we created this reflective learning content shortly. After designing these videos, we wanted to evaluate whether these videos could effectively educate and motivate users to do something about targeted advertising. To evaluate the videos, we recruited 138 university students and employees to participate in a longitudinal user study. Participants were randomly assigned to watch either the Fear Appeal video, the Fear Appeal with Reflective Learning video, or a control video, which was unrelated to Facebook or targeted advertising. In the study, participants first took a pre-survey for us to measure some baseline attitudes. We built and used a privacy-preserving data collection tool, which scraped each user's Facebook profile for pseudonymized aggregate data, such as number of ad interests, the state of various settings. For participants in the reflective learning condition, we additionally collected more detailed information, such as profile information, specific interests, life events, etc., and injected this data directly into the video that they were assigned to watch. After generating the video, none of this identifiable information was retained. Immediately after watching the video, participants took a post-survey, and our data collection tool once again collected the pseudonymized aggregate data. At the conclusion of the lab study, the reflective learning videos were deleted from the server. Participants then participated in three follow-up surveys at one week, one month, and 10 weeks uh, after, their, after the, they watched the video. We additionally used our Facebook data collection tool to collect actual behavioral data. Now, I'd like to highlight just a few of our findings uh, for a more comprehensive picture of our results. Please take a look at our full paper. So first, after participants watched the video, they were asked to navigate to Facebook's advertising controls. Both the fear appeal, shown in the graph as FA, and the fear appeal plus reflective learning condition did increase users' self-efficacy. As the majority of participants not in the control condition were able to navigate to the page with either no or partial assistance. For the second condition, for the control condition, all participants needed some assistance in finding these settings. Secondly, in the lab session, we detected a significant difference in the attitudes of participants after watching the video. Both the fear appeal and the fear appeal with reflective learning were more likely to change to change the user's mind about something, and users were more likely to indicate that they intended to change their behavior after watching the video. We additionally measured users' behavior over time to uncover any changes in how users interacted with Facebook after watching the videos. We couldn't detect a significant change in users' commenting and posting rate. However, we did find that users in the fear appeal condition reduced their number of weekly reactions by 28%, and the fear appeal with reflective learning condition led to a 35% reduction in weekly reactions. In our data collection tool, we collected the state of various advertising controls. This allowed us to detect any changes to these settings, as well as when these changes took place. Interestingly, we found a difference between the fear appeal and fear appeal with reflective learning videos. Participants that watched the Fear Appeal only video were more likely to opt out of viewing ads related to those sensitive topics, while those that so saw the reflective learning content were more likely to engage in proactive measures, such as removing the advertiser's ability to target them based on their profile information, and were more likely to remove interest categories. This is an important distinction. As I mentioned earlier, advertisers have the ability to target ads to a population, but also selectively excludes, exclude ads from a population. Making changes to users' sensitive topics essentially opts users out of seeing ads related to these sensitive topics, but does not prevent the harms from being excluded from certain advertisements. Only changing the interest categories or demographic information can prevent these potential harms. Regardless, both video interventions were effective in motivating at least some behavioral change. Some main takeaways that we find from this work. Uh, we find that the fear appeal with and without reflective learning 
to be effective at motivating behavior change. However, viewing the reflective learning content seemed to have a stronger effect. While we apply these designs to targeted advertising, we believe that this pattern of persuasive media may be well-suited for other fields, such as in public health campaigns or environmental problems such as drought or global warming, and in the digital security and safety space. While we probably wish that we could just abandon targeted advertising altogether, the reality is that it's likely here to stay. Until then, we can and must do more to protect users online, whether that be through education, such as persuasive media, or through more uh, robust consumer protections. I'd like to thank you for listening to this video, and I hope that you will um, enjoy the full paper as it's published. Thank you.